Women say to me all the time how they never had any problems with their teeth until they got pregnant and then their teeth started to fall apart. They started having cavities and bleeding gums and jaw pain. I'm a dentist, by the way. Random women aren't coming up to me on the street like, please help me, my children are ruining my teeth. Uh, I work at a bakery? No, like I do tooth stuff. It makes sense they're saying these things to me. Why take the time to make a video about pregnancy and teeth? Is this really a big problem? Yeah, it kind of is. Somewhere around 35% of women in the US don't see a dentist at all in a given year. You look at pregnant women specifically, that number rises to around 56%. You look at subgroups based on lower income levels and even less women are seeing a dentist in person in a given year. A lot of women aren't sure if it's okay to see a dentist when they're pregnant. There's financial concerns, but pregnancy is a really important time to be learning about oral health. Not only because your kid's trying to destroy your teeth, but also because we've got to learn how to take care of this kid's teeth when they arrive. All right, so our dental healthcare system is struggling to reach pregnant women. Fine, you can't come to me, I'm gonna to come to you. What's up, I'm on your phone. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about pregnancy and teeth. Listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. But I do have a very particular set of skills. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. I can make silly faces. Gobbly. Oh, look, it's my dumb face. <laughs> Dance and sing poorly, but loudly. I've learned some stuff about cameras. I'm going to use those skills to teach you how to take care of your teeth, your family's teeth, be healthier, save money. This isn't a dental office. It's a YouTube channel. There's nothing to be afraid of here except your own potential. Oh, snap, snap. Am I like a motivational speaker now? I just high-fived myself. You're welcome. You have the potential to have amazing teeth. So does your child. Let's make it happen, Captain. Hey you, yeah, you. Pause the video, read this. I hope your kid's teeth come in all beautiful and straight, but if they come in all jacked up, you can't pin that on me, coppers. Here's the good news. Pregnancy doesn't fundamentally change anything about why you get cavities or gum disease. It just makes you more susceptible. If you know the right preventative habits, you can still avoid the problems. Why do pregnant women get more cavities? The number one reason, changes in eating and drinking patterns and habits. That kid's hungry. You gotta feed it, you get cravings. What causes cavities? Carbs, sugar, and acid. The longer carbs, sugar, and acid are in your mouth and on your teeth, the more your teeth break down. The solution? Limit the time those foods and drinks are on your teeth. I'll link it in the comments, but you're gonna wanna go to a website. It's called thedentistdad.com. Click on the snack guide at the top of that website. You're gonna wanna print that out, put it up on your refrigerator. That is your new North Star when it comes to eating and drinking for healthy teeth. It's not that you can't have some carbs, sugar, and acid. It's that you have to be smart about the way you eat and drink these things. Snacking is the enemy. Sipping is the enemy. If you put anything in your mouth that can harm your teeth, you wanna get it out of there ASAP. And no, that doesn't mean spit it back out. It means swallow at a reasonable pace and then rinse with water thoroughly right afterwards. For example, if you have a soda, you wanna be done with it in about 20 minutes. Don't sit there and sip on it for an hour. The same goes for pretzels, crackers, cereal. That stuff sticks to your teeth. If you eat a handful of those kinds of things every once in a while throughout the day, you're gonna have carbohydrate gunk on your teeth all day long. Remember, water is your friend. Be rinsing with water throughout the day. Always be rinsing with water after you eat. Combine those smart eating and drinking habits with brushing and flossing your teeth well every night, you're not gonna see any increased problems with cavities when you're pregnant. What about gum disease? You may notice that your gums swell, get red, and bleed more during pregnancy due to hormonal changes. Even though you see more bleeding, you still wanna keep flossing to remove plaque on the sides of your teeth underneath the gum tissue. If you do that, you'll both prevent cavities and avoid worsening gum disease. I promise your gums will return to normal eventually once you bring your little bundle of joy into the world. Basically, floss even if it bleeds, everything will be better eventually. What about morning sickness and stomach acid? Stomach acid is very acidic. It can damage your teeth a lot. If you're having frequent morning sickness while pregnant, there's two things you can do 
to quickly neutralize the acid and protect and repair your teeth. Number one, mix a tablespoon of baking soda in a cup of water, swish that thoroughly for about 30 seconds, and spit. The baking soda helps neutralize the acid. Number two, rinse for 30 seconds with a fluoride containing mouthwash and then spit. That helps repair the teeth from acid damage. Now, you may have read or heard on the news or from parenting blogs that there's a link between gum disease and preterm birth or low birth weight. It's important to understand that these studies have only shown associations between mothers who have gum disease and babies being born early or underweight. An association is not the same as proving that one of those things is causing the other. Furthermore, we do not have studies that show that treating gum disease changes any of these outcomes. So for me, I don't think it's ethical to try to like scare tactic you into getting a dental cleaning because if you don't, then your baby's gonna be underdeveloped. We just don't have solid proof of that. That doesn't mean the research might not be pointing to some truth, but take it with a grain of salt. What I will say is it is very important for you to be establishing healthy mouth habits because guess who is going to be learning how to take care of their mouth from you? The baby! And we want the baby to learn good, yes? So healthy dental habits. I'll say this all day, every day. Flossing is more important than dental cleanings. Say what? Yes. Flossing is more important than dental cleanings. You can quote me, tell your friends, teach your family, teach your children, teach your baby. That kid's gonna watch you like a hawk. You know, monkey see, monkey do. Ooby doo, ooby doo, ooby doo. I wanna be like you. I walk like you, talk like you, I do. Ooby doo, ooby doo. I wanna be a man, man cub. I wanna be like you, I do. King Louie, Jungle Book. Anyone? Your kid's gonna watch you and they're going to imitate. Make sure they're imitating good things. Actions speak louder than words. So far, we've talked about dental care at home, how you and your baby can stay healthy. What if you already have a problem and you need to see a dentist? Is it safe to see a dentist while pregnant? Yes. Both dental exams and necessary dental treatment are safe for you and your baby. You can postpone elective dental care or treatment of less advanced dental problems until after you deliver. But realize life as a new mom can get busy. So if you do decide to postpone care, make sure after you deliver, you follow up with your dentist so that a minor issue doesn't balloon into a larger problem. If you have a pressing dental issue that can't wait for treatment, are x-rays safe while you're pregnant? Yes. Ask yourself this question. Would you fly in an airplane while pregnant? If yes, you just exposed yourself to more radiation than dental x-rays do. Also, you and your baby are still fine after flying in an airplane. The best time to have dental treatment, if you need to, is during the second trimester. It's approximately weeks 13 to 26 of your pregnancy journey. During the third trimester, there can be a little more pressure when you lay back in a dental chair. You know that little alien down there puts pressure on large blood vessels, you get a little lightheaded, it's uncomfortable. It can be helpful to tilt onto your left and have your dental care team place a rolled towel under your right hip for support. You know, basically getting the spa treatment. You know, just don't hesitate to tell your dentist if you're uncomfortable or if you need breaks. We can make accommodations to treat you safely and comfortably. Getting numb is safe. We have local anesthetics that are safe for you and your baby. No worries there. If you're someone who has dental anxiety and you typically use nitrous oxide for appointments, there is some evidence that that can be harmful for a developing baby. So if it was me and it's an option, I would avoid nitrous oxide while pregnant. What about pain medications while pregnant? So normally ibuprofen is the ideal medication for dental pain. However, taking ibuprofen, an NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug is not recommended during pregnancy, especially during the first and third trimesters. The safest pain medication to take while pregnant is acetaminophen. That's the generic of Tylenol. Avoiding opioid pain medications is also recommended during pregnancy, and generally those aren't necessary for dental procedures, including simple surgeries like extractions. Anti-anxiety medications, sedative medications like benzodiazepines that you may be used to taking to deal with fear of dental appointments also generally aren't recommended during pregnancy. The types of antibiotics that would be prescribed by a dentist for an oral infection 
are all safe during pregnancy. There are some antibiotics that can cause problems with the development of your child's teeth, but those are unlikely to be prescribed by a dentist. Pregnant women, as well as young children whose teeth are still developing, should not take tetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline. Those antibiotics can end up permanently staining the teeth bluish gray, brown, or yellow. What about fluoride? Is fluoride safe while you're pregnant? Yes. Just like with anything else, moderation is the key. Brushing with a fluoride toothpaste, rinsing with a fluoride mouthwash, having fluoride varnish applied to your teeth at a dental appointment, all of these are safe. The only time fluoride can cause any trouble is if you ingest it in large amounts. All of these products are formulated to be safe as long as they're used appropriately. You don't swallow fluoride, you let it spend some time on your teeth, and then you spit it out. If you wanna learn more about fluoride, how to use it safely and effectively, there's another video on my channel specifically all about fluoride. What about breastfeeding? Generally, if a drug is safe during pregnancy, it's also safe while breastfeeding. Another tip, let's say you're an anxious patient, you need to take a benzodiazepine to help with that anxiety for your dental appointment, but you're also breastfeeding. You can save up a surplus of milk by pumping before you take the benzo. Then after four drug half-lives, the drug is out of your system and you can start feeding your baby directly again. That way your baby doesn't get any exposure to the drug. You're gonna wanna take a benzo with a shorter half-life and that's gonna vary from medication to medication. Now, do I expect you to do that math on half-lives for benzodiazepines? No, your dentist can figure that out for you but I just want you to know that that's an option if you need that for dental treatment. Basically, bottom line, if you have any medication questions regarding dental treatment while pregnant or breastfeeding, talk to your OBGYN, talk to your dentist, but generally it's very safe to have most dental treatment completed while pregnant with some simple precautions. Again, I made this video because there's a lot of fear and anxiety out there when it comes to dental care. There's a lot of confusion about dental care and pregnancy. I want you to know that there's simple things you can do at home to stay healthy. And if you end up still needing help from a dentist, there are safe ways that we can still take care of you. You don't have to be worried and afraid of visiting a dental office when you're pregnant. Why is this weird YouTube dental talkie man making a video about dentistry and pregnancy? Because not having this information readily available and accessible to the public has consequences. I got a call from a young woman uh, on my emergency line on a weekend. She had been to two different dentists over the course of several months. Um, she'd had some fillings done, a root canal. Uh, she was told she had a cracked tooth. She had another tooth that had an infection in the bone. She'd been on antibiotics prescribed by those dentists for over two months. She'd had like four different antibiotic prescriptions. That's a lot of antibiotics. She was pregnant at the time and she was afraid of having dental treatment at that stage of her pregnancy. Uh, and when she talked to me, she had delivered already. She was a new mom. The reason she was calling me was because she knew that she still had work that needed to be done, but she was also very confused about why she was having all of these problems because before she got pregnant, she really didn't have any issues with her teeth. And all of a sudden it was just so much at once. You know, now she was getting cavities and cracking teeth and getting infections. Like, what the heck is going on? This baby's not enough to deal with? Come on. When it rains, it pours, right? You know, she brushed and flossed regularly too. Like she just was very confused about what was happening. So I sat there and I listened and I talked with her and I explained a lot of the things I've explained in this video and other videos on my channel about smart eating and drinking to avoid cavities. I talked to her about how one of the things that can crack teeth is clenching. Uh, and also how people who are more stressed or in pain tend to clench their teeth more. I mean, having a baby, that's not stressful ever, right? I plan on making some other more specific videos about clenching, grinding, night guards, what causes it, what works, what doesn't, you know, why. So look for those on my channel in the future. I talked to her about pain relievers. She wasn't taking any ibuprofen, although now that she had delivered, that would be a good option for her. So we talked and, uh, you know, she felt a lot better. When we started the conversation, she was crying and very confused. And when we ended the conversation, she was thanking me and saying how no one had ever explained any of these things in detail and how it all made so much more sense based on everything that she'd been experiencing. And it is hard to try and have these in-depth conversations in an emergency dental situation. You know, you try to remember to give people all these tips and info, 
you know, but sometimes you just, you don't have that much time. You're kind of rushed. They're in pain. They don't want to be there. They only kind of half listen to what I say because they're distracted or I'm being boring or not saying it in a way that's easy to understand, but they don't tell me that I'm not communicating well because they think that would be rude. And then there's four other patients waiting in pain for me to come over and try and figure out and diagnose and fix their problem. It's basically impossible for me to practice dentistry in a traditional setting and get this information to the patients who need it the most. I've tried and I'm trying, but it just doesn't work very well. The reality is I can't have 23 minute long conversations with everyone, but I can make videos that you can watch whenever you feel like it. I can write articles that you can read whenever you want. Hopefully that leads to less people suffering through dental limbo for months, having one problem after the next and having no idea why these things keep coming up. We're gonna see what happens on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. If you're skeptical, I would say, please don't be, because I really do believe that the information I'm trying to share with you will save you lots of time, money, anxiety, pain, discomfort, etc. The woman I talked to on the phone was in less pain at the end of our conversation. Words did that. Communication did that. We actually have a lot of studies that demonstrate that if you reduce anxiety, you reduce pain perception. Bedside manner, your ability to set patients at ease, these things matter. You know, you can look up enkephalins and endogenous opioids if you wanna understand the nitty gritty of how this stuff works, but it does work. So there's a book by Dr. Robert Sapolsky. He's a neuroendocrinologist. He actually has some really awesome YouTube videos. You should check those out. He's got a heck of a beard. Like if you're into beards, Sapolsky, He's got a beard. So the book is called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. This is a book right here, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And this book is all about chronic stress and how it wrecks your body. You know, one section talks about how giving people control and predictability in life reduces anxiety. I hope that's what I'm doing for you when it comes to dentistry. I wanna empower you to not just feel like a helpless, passive patient. I wanna help you to become a brave, confident, mouth health warrior who's ready to train their young ones to smile confidently and kick butt in life. Really, everyone should read Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. There's a lot of clues in here as to why America's healthcare system is struggling hard. Americans could learn a thing or two from Dr. Sapolsky. Is this video even still about pregnancy? I don't know. Why do you care so much? What's it to you, bub? What's it to you? If you're not pregnant and you watched this entire video, including the second advertisement to get to this section where I just goof off, that's kind of weird. You're kind of weird. Like, especially if you're a guy just like watching videos about pregnant ladies online. <laughs> what a creep. I mean, some people might call such a person a husband or a dedicated boyfriend, but <laughs> what if you just went home and were like, babe, Hurry, I gotta pour this baking soda in your mouth. I watched this YouTube video. It's good for your teeth, babe. Open wide, I'm a dentist, babe. I got a baking soda in your mouth. No, it's real science. I watched the thing on YouTube. Babe, just snort this baking soda. It's good for you. It's good for our baby, babe. Don't you care about our baby? But seriously, if you didn't understand something in this video, you want more information, I also write blog posts on medium.com. I'll link the post that's related to this video in the video description. You can check that out, read it. A lot of times I go into more depth on topics in those articles, and I link to additional resources from the American Dental Association, various medical organizations, government agencies. If you don't trust what I'm saying here, you can fact check me. I don't know everything, but I know some stuff, you know? I know some stuff, okay? I'm not a total idiot. It's not like I'm a total dumb dumb all the time, okay? Hopefully I taught you something. Please like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel. If you don't wanna to subscribe to my channel, you could like, I don't know, name a kid or a star or a dog after me, I don't know. Like my name's Mike Frank, so you, yeah, you could like name a star Francis, that'd be cool. I'd accept that. I'm not like a total dumb dumb all the time, okay? <laughs> Baby dance, 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 baby dance
While I was making this video, I actually got another call on our emergency line from a patient. She had her wisdom teeth taken out. She had questions about the safety of taking the medications that were prescribed because she was actually breastfeeding at the time and that hadn't come up prior to the procedure. That's kind of on us, <laughs> you know, see, I'm not perfect. She had questions about medications while breastfeeding. I talked her through it, you know, ibuprofen and Tylenol, both safe while breastfeeding. Um, she was also taking some amoxicillin, uh, an antibiotic, also safe while breastfeeding. She had been given a few tablets of oxycodone. Generally, those aren't necessary, even for the extraction of wisdom teeth. If she did end up needing to take one of those, I talked to her about half-lives. The half-life for oxycodone and for hydrocodone are both a little bit over three hours. So if you count four half-lives, you're at about 12 hours. So at about 12 hours, most of that drug is out of your system. So if you saved up some breast milk from before you took the medication, and then you waited until 12 hours later before you would breastfeed, again, probably gonna be okay, especially if you're taking low doses of the medication. And again, for wisdom teeth, ibuprofen and Tylenol in most cases should do the trick. She also had questions because she had read online that birth control can contribute to dry sockets after you have teeth taken out. That's actually true. They've done studies and there is a significant increase in risk for a dry socket after a tooth extraction if you're taking birth control. One study showed that if you're toward the end of a cycle of taking your birth control, tablets 23 through 28, that's actually a good time to get a tooth extracted if you need to get it removed. There was a lower risk of a dry socket if you were on tablets 23 to 28 as compared if you were on tablets 1 to 22 in your birth control cycle. So if you time it appropriately, even if you're taking birth control, you can actually still reduce the risk that you would get a dry socket. So yeah, anyway, I, I don't know. Sometimes life's funny like that. You know, I'm making a video for YouTube about pregnancy and birth control and medications. What happens? I get a phone call about those exact things. Life's funny.